It's September 7th. I like that day. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Let's wrap up our little walk through retrograde 2023, this exorbitant number of six planets retrograde at the same time. Our focus has been on it. We're going to go a little faster today. I just, those other two seemed like they needed a little bit of extra time. No exact aspects in the sky today, but we do have a void, of course, moon that starts this evening at 6.20 p.m. Eastern Time, and then the moon enters Cancer at 1 a.m. tomorrow Eastern Time, 1 in the morning, just after midnight. So that moon is wrapping it up in Gemini. All right, last couple of episodes, we talked about Pluto's retrograde, Saturn's retrograde. Let's talk about Neptune today. It went retrograde June 30th. It comes out December 6th. Here we are in that pattern that Neptune goes retrograde every year and stays retrograde for about half the year. Well, on the high timeline side of Neptune, we would say that we are reviewing our spiritual path. If statistically you were about half the population that is born with Neptune in retrograde, then your whole journey has been more of an inner journey at least in those Neptunian areas. And obviously during this Neptune retrograde, we would be amiss if we didn't mention the fog and the lies and the deceptions and the addictions. So those are the other side of the coin that also would be reviewed. Maybe a family decided to intervene. Maybe truth in a situation came out. Or maybe you're being deceived and don't know it. Yeah, probably best that Neptune is in retrograde half the year. Now let's move to Venus, the one that just came out. It was retrograde July 22nd through September 3rd. We covered that one pretty extensively. That was the six-week period to examine what is most important to us. Hopefully, you were able to defer any significant big money or relationship decisions until it turned direct. It's very powerful right now as it begins forward motion again. You could use that to your advantage in your romantic relationship. Or if you have a business deal you've been working on, see if you can close it. Now, these are by date, not by proximity to the sun, because Chiron lives between Saturn and Uranus in the sky. But Chiron is next as far as on our list, because the next day after Venus went retrograde, so did Chiron, July 23rd. And here's another one that spends five months in retrograde. This became so clear to me doing this exercise, and I'm so glad we did, because built into the rhythm of the universe is time to work on our stuff. I should have said a lot of time to work on our stuff. So here we pause to look at our old wounds. And do you know what your Chiron wounds are? They're represented in the chart by the sign, the house, the aspects, etc. If you're not, you want to learn about it. Check out our 101 course on the funastrology.com website. It's a great way to get proficient in things like that. There's also a special section in our Discord channel where there's a link at the top of the website, but our Discord channel has a special place for course members to converse and ask questions and look at various things around how to synthesize and integrate all of this. Kristen Lawhead runs all of that. She just completed a Kepler course and got glowing reviews. Congratulations, Kristen. And she's working her way through the OPA, the Organization of Professional Astrologers Certification Program. So we're so thrilled and pleased with everything Kristen brings to the table. Now, Mercury, August 25th through September 15th, usually about three weeks, happens three to four times a year. We really don't need to elaborate on that. It has been an extra powerful one from everything I'm hearing from everybody, including my own self. We've been feeling it. Heard of a lot of wrenches thrown into the plans. Now, is there any real development? Like we're talking about these outer planets where we really work on our soul path, our soul journey type stuff. What about Mercury? It's obviously more of a trigger, but I think what it is, is it's more of a momentary pause. I can't do what I do. I would have to shut everything down if I did the technology break that some suggest for three weeks, like you wouldn't hear from me. And across the board, for all of us, that's not practical. Can we throttle back? Can we do a little bit less? Yeah, maybe. Or you could start doing readings in the middle of it and (laughs) double down. I mean, okay, so here's the deal with Mercury, I think. 
X the moon, it's the fastest moving body. It's the fastest moving planet. Mercury retrograde is when Mercury passes between the sun and the earth. It's a time to slow down. Even Scorpios that have Mars sitting right on top of their sun should slow down. Okay, I get a demerit. I didn't during this one because I launched readings during it. We talked about that the other day. But, you know, I could intentionally weave breaks into the day and probably need to think about that for the next couple of weeks. Noted to self. Let's talk about Uranus. August 29th. We talked about it yesterday related to Burning Man two days before the event began. Who, in their right mind anywhere on the planet, would have anticipated a deluge of rain in the Nevada desert in early September? What's my favorite saying with Uranus? Surprise! And the surprise was not at all fun for one family because somebody did lose their life during this. So these things are serious business. What other surprises are around the corner between now and January 27th? Gosh, that seems so long, doesn't it? I think this is probably thematic. I don't know. So much, it seems like a tinderbox in the world right now. Is it all about to pop? Well, if it is, it's got the right stage from which to do it because Uranus in retrograde is with us for what seems like a long, long time. And between now and January 27th are the two eclipses of the fall of 2023. And my goodness, after it goes direct, we're just almost right upon just 60 days away, basically, February, March, yeah, then April, to the total solar eclipse of 2024. Now, there's not much we can comment on related to Jupiter because it just turned retrograde this week, obviously. But the one thing we can note is that because Jupiter begins its retrograde halfway through Taurus, it doesn't leave Taurus because of the retrograde. You know, the last couple of years, Jupiter has retraced back into the previous sign, and then it seems like rockets through the sign that it goes back into after going direct. Well, this time it stays in Taurus. So this is a great time to review money-related issues. You have between now and the last day of 2023, December 31st. And then right there around that as well, Mercury goes retrograde the next time, crossing into 2024. The dates on that are December 13th through 7 p.m. Eastern on January 1st. I went back and looked at when Mercury was in retrograde when a year began. Well, this one, 2023, Mercury was in retrograde. 2017, 2010, 2004. That takes us back 20 years. And that's about an every six to seven year pattern, except this year when number four for this year was right there at New Year's. So here's another anomaly. Get ready for 2024. But Mercury starting the year in retrograde is not an unusual phenomenon, but it's not a common one either. All right, there's your walk through. Let's slide out of here. I'll see you back tomorrow for TGI Friday. Thanks for listening. This has been fun. I have really enjoyed doing this. I hope it's been of some benefit to you as well. All right, see you tomorrow.